Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about an acrylic painting I did on a wooden canvas just last month. This is the finished piece which I'm showing you the process of in a type of video newsletter. For more, find me on Instagram and Etsy. Glad you're here, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy my newsletter video. I do love to jump right into a painting without sketching. But that was not an option for this one because I wanted to put so many layers of meaning into my painting and I wanted to use this bold, vibrant color scheme which I needed to test out first as well as my many initial ideas for the tiger painting which, you know, mostly ended up being dumped but that's what a sketchbook is all about. With my final concept mapped out I started taking my own reference pictures. I did not have a real-life tiger at my disposal, but I did have myself for the hand and head movements. And a bit of fun as well. Next I printed all the references that I thus collected, either took myself or found via Pinterest or Google and I laid them out on the table in front of me, which worked just as well as my first mini painting session. That was my test run for the bigger painting and it worked right away in my opinion. I didn't really do any other color sketches. And even though there is a slight sense of chaos in it, that's exactly what I wanted to go for. Since I don't usually work in acrylics, I needed to get some new supplies. So I went over to Berlin, which is about a one hour drive for me. And I visited my favorite art supply store, Bösner. Bösner is a chain in Germany, but every store has its own unique personality or vibe to it. At least that's what I think. And I like spending my days there. And I say days because once I'm in there, <laughs> hours pass by without me leaving it again. And when I do leave it, my wallet is always a lot emptier, a lot lighter than before. <laughs> but it's fine. It's my sacred place, my art heaven, where I get inspired to try new techniques every single time. It's also where I'm prone to succumb to desire the most and purchase inks that I didn't really have on my list. <laughs> but I was also dutiful and I went to see the overwhelming brush section in the end to choose my varnishing brush and other acrylic brushes. So yeah, I went home happily. <laughs> One of the bigger items I got in Berlin, which you see me unpacking here back at home, was a table easel. And I thought I would need it for painting in an upright position, because that's what you usually do with it. But I didn't end up liking that very much, so it was just for presentation purposes for me. This is a perfect example of a spontaneous purchase ending up being the best one. I discovered this book about ornaments the very same day, and I couldn't have been happier to have bought it because... It's just a perfect combination of especially Chinese and Japanese tiles and patterns of the past and I wanted to incorporate that type of style into my painting from the get-go, so it felt a bit like fate, to be honest. Because I wanted my piece 2022 Year of the Tiger to have a very geometrical foundation, I started measuring the border first, laying out the little boxes in the corners and then filling them with the ornaments I found in my book. I scanned, enlarged and printed them and I transferred them using graphite paper, which was a nice but also tedious way to do it, <laughs> which I didn't regret though because this type of graphite really sticks to the canvas or any surface you put it on and it didn't get smudged much by the paint I put on later. Now you're probably thinking, oh amazing, that's the best part of the video, now she's finally going to start painting. Well, not yet, but I promise it's going to happen soon. That day I started, well, procrastinating because I was a little scared, and then transferring the image from my mind's eye onto the canvas, my final layout. I didn't finish it all on the first day, I needed two days to do it, which shows how 
tricky this was, how much work it was. The painting always comes easy to me. Laying down color, choosing the right colors, it's fine. But the poses, the movement, the placement of everything, that was the hard part. But it's done now. It was done, past tense. <laughs> So far I've covered what types of tools I'm using and how I set things up, how I approach things. But now I'm diving into the full meaning of my painting and how I worked with the acrylic paints, how I layer things on top of each other, why I chose the colors I chose. You might be interested in that because it all was following a plan. I didn't just do it because my intuition told me to. I had planned this sort of look to tell a message and I mean... I'll first let you guess for yourself because it's always fun for people and I don't want to take that fun or the experience from you to make your own impression of my painting, of my artwork and let it tell you its own story. But yeah, right at the end I'll solve the riddle. <laughs> um, my mom was pretty shocked when I put down that first neon pink layer on the actual canvas and yeah, she visited me, we had a cake and coffee together and... Yeah, she said, oh my God, this looks very ugly. I'm sorry, but I hate this color. And no one's going to put this up in their living room or just buy it in general if you're going to make it look like this. And you don't usually work in these colors. I really like the colors you chose usually, but um, for this one, I'm not digging it. And I was like, mom, thanks for that. <laughs> but also, good point, I hate it too. <laughs> It's not the end of things and this is just the start. You have to be patient just as I have to be patient. You have to wait how it looks in the end. It's all part of the plan. <laughs> and then she was a bit relaxed. And in the end she did love it too. She was like, well, it is quite bold still. The colors are unusually vibrant. But this was not an accident, guys. I wanted them to pop. I wanted the colors to be in a way that you couldn't look away from them in a good and a sort of warning way. A bit like those markers we use to make something stand out that's a bit more important than the rest. For example, a bit of grammar in French class or an equation in math. And it's just the same with our emotions. We need or want to process them, but first we need to get acquainted with them to make ourselves understand what it actually is we're feeling. And then we can further investigate. Working on this piece was my way of doing that, even though there were some really good days like this one where I was incredibly proud of the progress I was making and I felt the joy of painting surging through me. A lot has been going on this year. A lot has happened already and the year isn't even halfway over. We're all fighting our battles big and small. I'm sure a lot of you feel this way and this doesn't leave anyone unscathed. So I followed the urge to turn this into something, to make something from it that I could share with other people. Occasionally accompanied by my dog who joined me in my painting sessions, I used those fine summer days to mainly spend indoors and work on my piece to get it out of my system and unlike what I usually do, bring some recent events into my art. I put the cold neon pink layer underneath so it would shine through here and there in a bright but not entirely warm way. The color choices make it look a bit like a scenery from a Disney movie, which I don't say to mock the situation, rather to get across the feeling of still looking out for somewhat of a happy ending. It's meant to set a contrast to the severity of everything. All the blues and purples add a bit of subtle melancholy to it without it being overwhelming. I wanted there to be a sense of light and beauty living amidst chaos and destruction, as it always has been. By now you will have formed your own impression, so you probably don't mind me explaining a few details regarding my painting. Looking at the clouds, you can see I was inspired by ancient Chinese ink artworks and the ornaments in them. I wanted to incorporate and honor traditional elements from the past, but also make the piece look modern by way of the colors and adding surreal images like the topped over ice cream cones with the ice cream melting down in the background. 
the balance of this world feels awfully tilted right now, so one of the bottom ornaments got turned the wrong way round. The tiger and the girl are protecting and shielding each other, the tiger putting his or her paw around the girl, the girl shielding the tiger's eyes from the view so they don't have to see it, as a very kind and powerful gesture. My first sketch for this union of equals, this pair protecting each other, was actually a Chinese lady or girl and a tiger. And then it ended up being me. It turned out to be a self-portrait, even though I hadn't set out to do one. And I still want to stress that I didn't want to make this about myself or have myself be the focus point. But now, I suppose, when you stand in front of the painting, the first thing you see is the face of the girl looking a bit mournful and protective of the tiger and that's exactly what I wanted to achieve but yeah, it happens to look like me. I still hope people can resonate with this and see themselves in myself or the girl in general and that's what I wanted to show with this, the companionship and being there for each other. That being said, once I had settled on making this a self-portrait, I dedicated all my energy to make it look like me and this is very hard guys, you all know that. You look at yourself every day in the mirror, you do see yourself, but not in that way. You don't fully acknowledge the shape of your nose or your eyes, how it all goes together and what the geometry of it is. And it's very hard to not make it look like a lifeless puppet sometimes when you paint yourself. But yeah, I managed in the end, I think. It just took me a while to get there. I worked over the face so many times, you have no idea. Until finally laying down the last brush strokes doing the border and feeling very accomplished indeed. Oh, never mind, you just caught me lying. <laughs> Those were actually the last brush strokes, me doing the varnishing after letting the acrylic paint settle and dry for two days as to not smudge it. Then I went over it with a matte varnish to preserve that gouache-like look I wanted to go for and it was all water-resistant and UV-protected. Showing off your artwork can also just be called presenting it. So here I am at the park. My mom was filming me holding up my painting and I did feel a little silly, especially because passers-by kept staring at us. But I think as an artist, there is a time to actually go out there, show what you've done, not hide it in a cupboard. And even though it can be a little scary to share something that means so much to you with the rest of the world, it's the only way to start a conversation and get feedback on it and that's what I want to do now so let me know in the comments what you think about this what it made you feel and who knows maybe I'll do more like this in the future Just remember, this was meant to be a newsletter video, so here are the news. Aside from finishing my big acrylic painting, which is now for sale by the way, contact me if you're interested, and creating limited edition art prints of it, I've also recently started attending art markets in Berlin and Potsdam where I live. And let me tell you, it's been such a rewarding, joyful experience to finally be able to lay out my products on a table and sell them to people face to face have a lovely conversation with them, get encouraging feedback. It was a lot of hard work, but it was very much worth it. And I thank everyone who came to my booth. I'll definitely do this again. Thank you until next time.